Um, then over to you now. Uh, I know you've recently been to Canada and Sweden um, trying to learn more about the application of lean um, in healthcare, uh, you know, connecting to what Rene was just saying. Can you tell us a little bit about what you have learned when you were there and maybe some thoughts in general on uh, the application of lean in this, in this sector? Well, uh, lean in healthcare has been, uh, has been a huge movement globally over the last 10 years. And there's been a great deal of activity and there's probably now a growing deal of frustration as well because the activities don't connect and the improvements uh, are not seen in the bottom line. And, uh, and yet individual patients and individual carers are seeing improvements to, to their work. So there's a great hunger, and I was really surprised, both in, uh, in Sweden but also in Canada, uh, to see people really wanting to take the next step, which is actually not just to think about my department within the hospital, or not even just my hospital, but actually the system that I'm part of, the primary care and the tertiary care system, and thinking about lean system-wide. Mm -hmm. And I, very, very interesting experiment, controversial experiment going on in Saskatchewan in Canada, where they're trying to engage the whole healthcare system for a province of a million people uh, in a very, very ambitious lean program. But the interesting thing about that is that they've also used uh, the 3P process to engage patients and providers, the nurses and doctors, to actually design new facilities to new, new hospitals, new processes. And that has been enormously successful, and the results are really quite staggering in terms of a dramatically reduced footprint for the hospital and a reduced operating cost for the life of the hospital. And uh, enormous engagement, because people feel this is their, their hospital, they, yeah. they really helped shape it. And the hospital has been designed so it's easily reconfigurable as well. So as needs change, it will change as well. And uh, I think we're at that threshold where people see that if only they could connect all of the pieces, um, that it would have a big impact. And that hunger is there. There were 700 people came to the conference in northern Sweden and they were just completely surprised. People are looking for guidance as how they can move beyond simply improving their own piece of work. Okay. And that's, uh, that's, I think, is really interesting. That's great. Uh, Frank, back to your question, what is really nothing done, done in when I just described a part of it is, we tend to, traditionally, we tend to think in design thinking. We design the perfect system, mm -hmm. and once we've designed the perfect system, we put people in there as if they're little robots, and then they go on and they do the work. I think really lean is you take what's there, Mm -hmm. You make it work with the people. Mm -hmm. And as you do so, you start finding the engineering and development problems you encounter. Mm -hmm. So when you redesign the next product, the next hospital, the next institution, this learning is integrated. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have a very narrow vision of lean. They think that lean will help them solve their immediate operational process problems. But it does that. But we have to understand the purpose of this. The purpose is going all the way through breakthrough technology, as Toyota did with the Prius on one hand, and the other purpose is involving every single person in suggestions, as you were mentioning with the psychiatric <coughs> the hospital case. And somehow, when we blend every person's in, uh, involvement, move into engineering, and create a next generation product, we, 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 we have leaned the entire benefit to society. And this is the thing we're, we're seeking. Yeah, I think the thing that distinguishes lean uh, from traditional consulting is that it doesn't work in a do-it-to-you mode. You know, I've got a problem, traditional business solution is you're going to hire a consultant to fix that problem for yeah. me. I don't have to do anything, they'll fix it for me. That doesn't work. And if you think of lean that way, uh, it will have the same initial results from Hawthorne effect and from below hanging fruit and so on, but actually it won't last. What distinguishes lean is the engagement of everybody in the process to make their own work better as a preparation for linking their work with others. And linking their work with others and then realizing that if we could start again, we could actually do it a lot better. So that's that continuous improvement uh, dimension that only comes by involving people. And you can only involve people, people can only learn lean by doing it. And so you can't teach them in a classroom because learning it's only the first step. Actually doing it is what counts. So it's a learning by doing and coaching approach 
that uh, you have to take to build the capabilities of the line to engage people to have these results. And so actually, I think the challenge is more serious for management than it is for the shop floor. Because management has been used to command and control and getting people to fix things for them and don't have to think about it. Um, here, they have to be actually hands-on because the role of management is actually to support and enable the line to do its work. And that's a fundamentally different concept from management's there to allocate resources and uh, decide which markets to play and what capital in to invest in mm -hmm. and so on. It's a different game. And yeah, it takes a while for management, if they're open to that, to realize and to learn how to do that. Yeah. And the further difficulty to go one step beyond is that the goal of continuous improvement is continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. So it's even, for management, it's difficult because once they've fixed one problem, reach level, we move the goalpost and mm. you move on to the next thing because the goal of continuous improvement mm. is actually continuous improvement. So it's also part of the fun and, and when people get it, it's what makes it so dynamic and so involving and so just, just fun to do. But when people don't see that aspect and when they resist it, they find it a bit difficult. Mm.